Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. Um, things have been a bit frenetic uh, here over the last few weeks. We've been very busy just fixing cars and restoring cars, uh, which is why I've been conspicuous by my absence for either four or five weeks now. And um, I'm very sorry about that, but uh, unfortunately, the YouTube channel is secondary to the business here. It's not the other way around. We don't run the business around the YouTube channel. So um, it's just a case of as the chips fall, as the time becomes available, I've been traveling a bit uh, and one or two exciting videos coming up with that, very exciting and interesting videos. But otherwise, um, I'm, I've, it's, just been, it's just been busy being busy. Anyway, enough of all that, we'll move on. This is a workshop catch up um, and one of our old friends uh, is back and that is this Lamborghini Miura. This is the car that sold at RM auction in October 2019, and it was 1.25 million pounds it sold for, which is very much in the public domain. It's a Miura S, a 1970 car, and it's come in for a full restoration apart from the interior. And um, a few, quite a few videos ago, we looked at Craig preserving the original carpets bearing in mind this car is now over 50 over half a century old over 50 years old and we're still managing to keep all of the interior because Craig has sympathetically and very cleverly managed to remove everything including carpet that was uh, glued down from new and using a few tricks of the trade because normally if you pull carpet off like that it leaves half the uh, half the piles behind and you've got to be very careful leaving half the piles behind but um, the car has been a way to be painted and it's come back beautifully, beautifully done. We're just building up the mechanical aspects now. We've ordered a new wiring loom for it, which Pete has been fitting. And this is the original dashboard vinyl from 1969, 1970, which is utterly, utterly reusable. And in fact, just to recap the reason why we got this job because obviously the, uh, the, the new buyer was inquiring at the time around various uh, people. And um, we weren't focusing on the commercialism of saying, no, the whole car needs redoing. We actually said to him, as soon as I mentioned the words, preserving the original interior, which is beautiful and lovely and almost unmarked, he said, you've got the job. You're more interested in quality than you are in the books. So that's great. That's. Uh, fantastic for us really. So we're, we're carrying on building it. Craig's beginning to put the original carpets in uh, and I challenge anybody to tell whether they are a week or 50 years old. They look absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, this car is coming along at quite a speed now. We were behind schedule with it with COVID and one thing or another, but we're back up and running, ripping through it now at a pace of knots. And we'll be doing more updates of this as it comes along. And uh, we're just going to have a look at another uh, Miura that's been under restoration, which we haven't featured very much up to now. So let's take a look at that. Well, here we have an other, another absolute beauty. This is an original Miura SV, which was the, the ultimate production iteration of the Miura. It was the third generation uh, P400, P400S and P400SV for Sprinto Veloce, that's what it uh, stood for. And it's got these um, bulbous uh, flared wheel arches. And a while back, um, I actually, some, some videos ago, I had the pleasure of visiting. I got invited to visit Marcello Gandini uh, at his home in Northern Italy, just outside Turin. And we discussed how he designed the Miura, uh, an absolutely incredible experience for me. And I took the Italian job Miura along and he explained to me at the time that uh, he was limited on the original Miuras, the P400 and the S. His design was limited by tyre technology because they didn't have wide, anything resembling low profile tyres that could be used on production cars. They could be used in racing cars with different um, tread compounds and patterns, but they couldn't be used on road cars until Pirelli developed a wide tyre um, which actually, and that made the Miura become the car that uh, Gandini and to a certain extent, Ingegnere Gian Paolo Dallara, who I also had the pleasure of visiting in a previous video, check those out. But they both explained that the Miura started life with excessively narrow wheels because they were the only wheels that could fit the tires that were available. 
we moved forward to the SV and things got more interesting because we've got this, this bulbous, more aggressive back end here. And what actually happened was the tires were wide enough 265 section tires, 275, depending on um, which manufacturer. And they actually were able to put the correct tires on that they always envisaged. And Pirelli and Lamborghini in those days worked together incredibly closely. And Pirelli would do things that other tire manufacturers wouldn't even consider to take advantage of the high technology cars that were Lamborghini were producing. So um, they went hand in hand in ratcheting up the technology. And the same thing happened in the 70s with the silhouette, very low profile tyres on that. The Countach LP400S, which was spawned from some non-production Countaches made for Walter Wolf. Very long story, but the result is, this is the daddy of production mirrors. Um, it's worth around about twice the cost of the next model down, the Mura S, which is worth more than the P400. Um, this is a three million US dollar 200 um, sort of two and a quarter million pound car when it's finished it came in from the states it was red it's been painted back by ryan who's done a beautiful job on it to its original verde mura lime green the iconic lime green that mirrors are known for and in fact they only made 15 svs in this color because things were moving on we we're into the uh, the 70s um, sort of reds uh, other, other colours like that and the, the lime green for the moment went into abeyance. It's back again now of course in the 21st century towards our end of the 21st century. Even Ford Mondeos are now lime green, some of them. So, um, but this is the car that sort of started the lime green craze and it's lovely to put this back to uh, its original lime green. As I say, we've been working on this car, we've been rebuilding the suspension and uh, getting everything ready to bolt back on when it comes back. So we're just about to start work on this. Very rare car, this. They only made 150 Miura SVs. One of the reasons why they're worth so much is the rarity, but also they were the ultimate evolution of the Miura in, as I say, in production terms. So really interesting car. We're going to be, uh, we're doing a full ground at restoration on this. And the interior on this is the exact opposite of the yellow Miura. It needed doing badly. It was retrimmed in the 1980s using some pretty awful leather. So Craig's been up to all sorts of mischief in his corner of the workshop. And we're going to have a look at the interior now um, because that is also being restored back to 100% uh, original in appearance and materials. Okay, let's go and see Craig. Well, here we are. Yes. Um, well, you have been up to some mischief, haven't you? Uh, in a good way. Um, so this is, this is the retrim. This is a bit, essentially, it was trimmed in a pretty awful uh, tan leather before, wasn't yes. it? A light tan leather. Um, and nothing was right about it, really, was it? No, it was. It, it just, yeah, you're right. It just didn't look right. No, n not not nice stitching. No, no, etc. So you've basically very beautifully recreated all the original, all the right, all the original stitching in all the right order, haven't you? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these are the back of the centre console. They go between the seats like that. Yeah. Uh, that's the one off the yellow Miura, which is original and it's going to be reused like that. And then you have re... Sorry, other way around. <laughs> hey, it's that good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see, you even had me fooled. <laughs> that was the deliberate mistake. Um, we, can, uh, we, can, we can... It'll all be dealt with in post-production, <laughs> honestly, sir. Um, and so this is the... Uh, <laughs> this is the original bit of the, the yellow Miura. Yes. Yeah. And if you look, your, your stitching and your spacing and everything else is as identical as identical can possibly be. Yeah, it? it varies on theirs. So we've gone for the best stitch, really, because, you know, one piece will vary the stitching on the other piece. Uh, to, uh, right. <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yes. To another piece. <laughs> yeah. And these are the instrument binnacles, which, again, are just beautiful. And how you vary stitching, I don't know. But, yes, anyway. <laughs> um, we've got the police helicopter taking off as well. Um, it is just good mischief you've been up to, is it? <laughs> um, but this is the centre console, which again looks beautiful. Absolutely lovely. All the right stitching. It just, 
Honestly, Craig, you, you never cease to amaze me in the, uh, the, the beauty of your work, really. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, and we've got the original velour here. All these materials are exactly 100% faithful to original, yes, aren't they? Yeah. They are. It, this is indistinguishable from, um, I mean, you look at that, um, there's, you know, there's hardly any difference really. A bit of UV light fading over the years altered the colour slightly. Yeah. But apart from that, they're pretty well indistinguishable from each other. Um, and this is the Veluto or Velour. And this goes in the middle of the seats, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. And this is sense. exactly, so this is what it would have had. That car's a 1972, so it's exactly 50 years ago as we stand here. And this is a very interesting material. Um, but this is what SVs came with as standard, actually. Mm. So you're going to work your magic in the middle of the seats with that. Yeah. And the, the bolsters are in the black, which is the same as the um, door cards. Yeah. And there's a bit goes in here, isn't there? Yes, there well? the, yeah, the insert, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's coming along beautifully. This car is going to be absolutely <laughs> stunning. It's going to look great. Uh, it should do, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, mm, okay, we'll uh, carry on, carry okay. on the mischief, <laughs> and um, I'm sure it will be revealed in due course. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, well, we're going to have a look at another uh, interesting car now, which James has been doing some welding work on, and that's a uh, another piece of interesting Italian. Um, metal stroke ferrous oxide, depending on which side of the fence the car has been for a number of years. In other words, how rusty did it get? Um, so we're going to have a look at that now. And um, yeah, that's over in the corner in James' little domain. Well, um, this is a car called a Fiat 130 Coupe, which is a very unassuming name. And uh, if you didn't know better, it would sound like the sort of car that Mama used to go and fetch her pasta in, uh, in, a, in a car that took about two square meters of a parking space. But no, this is a serious car. This is not a little Fiat for uh, put putting round downtown wherever. This was a very expensive car when it was new, and I'm going to feature this in a video quite soon because it has a striking resemblance to another car and is an interesting piece of motoring history in itself. But the 130 Coupe was a lovely, lovely, elegant car. But boy, did they rust. They really, really, really rusted. Did I say that? They really, really, really rusted. Um, incredible. After 18 months, two years, there were bubbles appearing here. Uh, I mean, very, very bad generally. But this car is a UK right-hand drive car. And as far as I can tell, they only made two manual right-hand drive Fiat 130 coupes. And this is one of them. So this was quite an astute buy. A gentleman in London bought it at auction. And the underneath the floor is incredibly solid on this car, which is miraculous really, considering how they rusted. And James has been uh, fabricating a new bit of tin here, new bit of metal, which is actually far better, dare I say it, than the metal they were made out of originally. And he's been doing the same on the other side. And we're obviously keeping an eye on the budget with this. We don't want to go crazy with it, but uh, it's a really interesting job to do this, particularly on such a solid 130 coupe. Very, very unusual. More about that later. But in the meantime, that concludes another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop video. Thanks very much for watching, uh, and we will be back with something very, very soon.